the last thing I remembered was having both hands on the side of the canoe, looking out at the water to see if Chuck was in the water, and then not seeing him, thinking, oh my God, you know, where, where, what happened to Chuck? And then looking up, and then the next thing I remembered was this just intense feeling of, almost like I was coming apart or something. That's the only way I can describe it. Then the next thing I remembered was uh, being on my back in this hazy environment, which was just like this nightmare that I'd been having. All four friends seem to recall a similar traumatic experience. I'm lying on my back and I'm disoriented. I'm not sure where I am. As I'm forcing and struggling to get up, a face appears and looks straight down at me. They reminded me of insects. I remember thinking, my God, these things look like bugs. They had like uh, large eyes, almost like ants have. Um, they could have been goggles for all I know, but um, and they had some kind of clothing on, like spandex. I became focused on this thing's hand and realizing that it was not a hand like ours at all. And this one had me by the wrist and he was holding my arm up and he had something else in his hand. But it, I didn't like the looks of it. And I remember thinking, oh boy, here we go, I'm, this is it. I got five seconds to live, they're going to cut me open, they're going to dissect me, whatever. I just want to get out of here, get me out of here. It would take hours under hypnosis before the four men fully detailed the alien examinations. Later, they recalled the peculiar events that brought them back down to Earth. They moved us again into this other space, this room. Then this area in front of me started changing somehow. It was doing something, it was some type of machine or something. It was very strange. And the last thing I remembered thinking was, here we go, I don't know what's going to happen next, but something is happening. Under regressive hypnosis, I remember the uh, uh, aliens trying to um, put me in the canoe. There was uh, one of them standing in the canoe over me, trying to uh, adjust my position in the back of the canoe, and another one was sort of waist deep in the water right next to me. And then... Um, they tried to position Jim Wiener in front of me, but he's heavier, and they were having a hard, hard time with him. And then the other two were beamed right on land, and then Jim got out to join them. As their recollections took shape, the four men learned why their roaring campfire had seemed to burn out so quickly. To those who investigate abduction cases, it's known as missing time. Perhaps as much as three hours had passed during the abduction, from the time the men first saw the UFO until the time they found themselves standing on the beach. Meanwhile, their fire had burned down to embers. Hypnosis had restored their recollections of the missing time with unsparing intensity. But now there was no hiding from the memories, no hiding from the trauma of what had apparently happened at Smith Pond. I mean, every time I had one of these experiences, um, you know, I would rationalize it as a dream so I could cope with it and, and say, well, what the heck is really going on here, you know? Um, is it related to my seizure disorder? Um, is it, um, you know, something I'm eating? Do I have a brain tumor? Uh, you know, am I working too hard or um, am I under a lot of stress? What the heck could possibly cause this kind of repetitive experience? The Allagash Four are not alone. Their story is remarkably similar to the accounts of thousands of other ordinary people who face the nightmarish certainty that they have been in the hands of aliens.
Still, despite all the convincing testimony, the subject of alien abductions is the source of bitter controversy.